Winter Street Cemetery and Exeter Cemetery give home to tenants that are considered especially fascinating. In the town of Exeter, the dedicated members of Exeter TV and Exeter Historical Society investigate these spirits. These are their stories. Jude Hall was a Revolutionary War vet who won his freedom following the war. Although all his children were technically born free, that didn't keep them out of harm's way. Three of the Hall's children would be captured into slavery. James Hall was only 18 when a local man named David Wedgwood claimed that he owed him $4. Bound and dragged out of the house in front of his mother, he was taken to the Newburyport jail where he was shipped to New Orleans and sold. James Hall never made it back to Exeter. Another son, Aaron, went to sea out of Providence, Rhode Island. After the voyage, he went to settle his account with a clothing outfitter only to discover that the $20 debt he thought he'd signed for was listed as $200. Realizing he'd been cheated, he tried to make his way home but was overtaken in Roxbury, carried back to Providence, enslaved, sent to sea, and never heard from again. William, a third son, also went to sea and was kidnapped into slavery in the West Indies. He managed to escape after 10 years and made his way to England where he became a captain of a coal ship from Newcastle to London. Unfortunately, this gravestone is just a memorial as it remains unknown where Hall was exactly buried. Amber Swayze was a notable entrepreneur responsible for efforts to beautify the town of Exeter. Swayze never forgot his childhood home of Exeter. He and his wife visited here every summer, and since they didn't have any children of their own, his gifts to the town were very generous. He was tired of the rickety old wooden bandstand that was dragged into the center of town for summer performances of the Exeter Brass Band. He discussed the problem with sculptor Daniel Chester French while French was sculpting his likeness. French was also from Exeter, and the two of them decided that a bandstand designed by French's friend, architect Henry Bacon, was just the thing. The three men visited Exeter in 1915 to check out locations, and in August of 1916, the Swayze Pavilion, usually called the bandstand by locals, was dedicated. The band still plays there every July. In 1930, Swayze, now mostly retired from business, spent even more time in Exeter. The trip from the downtown to his house at Fort Rock Farm took him past the town dump on the banks of the Squamscott River. Swayze decided to clean it up and donate the land to the town. Work began that fall and in November of 1931, the Exeter Shore Parkway was dedicated and immediately renamed Swayze Parkway by the grateful citizens of Exeter. Today, this beautiful slice of land is used for walking, jogging, town concerts, our farmer's market, and it's a favorite place for wedding and prom pictures. All thanks to Ambrose Swayze. The Murphy gravestones tell the tragic story involving a fatal bakery fire and the doll who survived it. This German wax doll named Christine was given to Christine Murphy on the day she was born in 1898. The Murphys owned a bakery on Water Street, and in 1919 this doll, along with some others, was used for part of an Easter display in the front window. The dolls were still in the window in June when a terrible fire swept through the bakery. The Murphy's son Forrest, who was a young teenager, died in the fire. Christine the doll resides at the Exeter Historical Society to this day.